Awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, guys, first off, I want to say thanks for letting me do this. My name is Kurt Von Bargen. I'm the D-line coach, University of Maine. Um, and we're going to talk about defensive line, pass rush fundamentals. And what I see, how I see this going, guys, is um, I'm going to go through fundamentals of the pass, of the passing I think are important for, important for the position, and then go through the drills that we use to uh, teach us fundamentals and techniques, okay? Um, before we start, guys, just my contact info. I know this isn't really a question and answer, but if you guys got questions, concerns, about anything I just talked about on here or showed, my Twitter, guys, is right here. It's Kurt at Kurt Von Bargen. My email is kurt.von at main.edu. Feel free to hit me up, guys. I got plenty of time right now to answer questions or answer emails and DMs, wherever you guys got for me, okay? Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Virginia, uh, but I went to East Carolina, played safety there, uh, graduated 2009. Like a lot of guys, um, the coaches I played for had, had outside of my parents had the greatest impact on me of anybody. Um, uh, it's Coach Holtz, Coach Hudson, Rick Smith, all those guys, man, are just huge for my career and, and me growing as a person. Man, I hope to have a similar impact on my guys um, as, I, as, as I keep coaching. Uh, from there, I knew I wanted to coach with health education major, major and jumped right into college coaching. Um, my first job in 2009 was at the United States Coast Guard Academy in New London, Connecticut. I was coaching actually outside linebackers there. Um, Division three school from there went to Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. Another, another Division three school coached linebackers there. Was there two years. Briefly at Dartmouth College, where I really had a lot of different roles there, but I was there for a short stint. Then um, went to be a graduate assistant at South Florida. Worked for the defensive line and linebackers over my course of three years. Had three different coordinators and learned a lot of football from really good coaches down there. Then I had a chance to get closer to home. Uh, Chuang University is a Division II school in North Carolina, just south of Virginia, uh, just south of Virginia Beach. Had a chance to coach linebackers and also be the defensive coordinator there. Um, and then uh, January of 2019, uh, got the chance to come to the University of Maine and be the defensive line coach, and I love it. We got great kids, great staff, man. It's a really outstanding place, tons of support. And um, couldn't ask for a better situation than, than uh, we have here at University of Maine. Um, kind of who we are. So you guys can kind of, as we watch the film, you can kind of know what you're watching and kind of an idea of, of who we are. We're not really going to talk schemes anymore, just techniques of the position. So hopefully, whatever your scheme is, um, you can take stuff with you. But um, we're a base 4-3 under team, okay? So we base out of a four-down look. We'll get to still a first, second down hokey package, we call it. It's a 3 3 5 ish type scheme. You'll see that. And if we get some odd stuff on early downs, um, then third down or pass situations, the calls for, we get to nickel where it's a four down uh, look. We're trying to get our four best pass rushers on the field. We're also, if they're inside edge guys, the four best guys get up the quarterback. So a lot of times we'll do Indy on Thursdays. And all got, I got tons of guys, linebackers, the whole deal, just to really try guys out and see who's got a natural feel for it. Then we, we also have a dime package, which is a three down look. Um, just once again, best three rushers in the field, regardless of who they are, um, guys that can get the quarterback. Okay, some guys got a knack for it and some don't. We got to improve the guys that got that knack best we can. Um, now, in terms of just fundamentals of the position, I'm a firm believer, and I just regardless of positions coached, I've coached linebackers, D line, outside DBs, whatever. Um, I think it's important. I learned this early on in my career from a guy I worked for and played for that. Um, before you get into like installs, scheme, playbook, I think the most important thing is to sit down and go over um, the fundamentals you think are important to your position, things that you want to see on film when you turn that video on, okay? And oftentimes these are things that carry over from scheme to scheme, play with the playbook, and it takes precedent in my mind over any installation or anything you're doing from that standpoint, okay? Um, I think that's important. And when I first started coaching the D-line, I really broke it up separately into two groups, um, run game fundamentals and pass game fundamentals. And I've got this written in my office um, listed with my drill battery underneath it, okay? Um, so for stance and get off, I'll have a number of drills in the run game that kind of emphasize um, that fundamental. And obviously drills cross over te techniques and fundamentals, but certain ones do have more of a focus than others. And this helps me when in terms of like developing my daily indie, my off season development program, so I can pick and choose from this battery of what I got to develop and what I got to do each day and what we got to improve upon. And I'll do the run game stuff quick, guys. Um, I know we're here more, uh, for the pass game. I'm going over pass rush fundamentals, but I'll quickly go over these and I'll go in depth into the pass game fundamentals that uh, we talk about in, in our group. 
Um, the first, and there's the first one we talk about in the run game is stance and get off. Okay. Um, the next we get into pad level, blow delivery and target, scheme recognition, block destruction, and finish. Okay. And finish is going to carry over. That just re return, uh, refers to just effort, 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 and finish violently at the end of a play. Okay. And that'll carry over to the next thing we're about, we're about to talk about. Okay. Um, now, in terms of the pass rush fundamentals, okay, it starts the same. Okay. We talk about stance and get off. Okay. The first thing we talk about with stance and get off of our guys is in the run game, first, second down, we were a man hand down team and we get real in depth with the stance, get the guys in there. Um, but we're a man hand down team and we get obviously get a three point stance being a four down. When we get the th third down guys, pass situations. I tell those guys, elongate your stance. Okay. Like you're a sprinter stance where you jump out of your stance, putting pressure on that O lineman. Okay. And I'll let the edge guys get in two points. Okay. Now I do still want their hand out in front of their face mask so they can crowd the ball and still know they're not off sides. Okay. That does carry over. I'm that stance elongate like a sprinter. I don't care what foot's back. Those edge guys can get in two points. However they feel best getting to the quarterback. Okay. In terms of pre-snap keys. Okay. We key the knee of the man we're on and we periff the ball. Okay. And the second that thing moves, we're going. Okay. Um, we want to jump out of our stance. Okay. Jump out of our stance. We want to gain ground and run game. We talk about replacing the down foot, getting our hands to our target, getting our feet in the ground. Pass game is different. We're trying to gain ground that O line and put pressure on them the entire way. Um, we want to beat our man to a spot, which I'll get to here shortly with, with the next part. Um, but the next part is having a plan in mind. Okay. Having a plan is huge. Okay. Um, and the first thing I tell the guys in run game, it's gaps, not lanes. Run game to me is more black and white. Paskin's got more gray area. Okay. So we talk lanes, not gaps. And how we communicate that is we are rushing uh, two ears and two eyes. Okay. I'll refer to that as like the two ears get the outside cage, two eyes be the inside cage. I used to use the word like wingtips and numbers, um, but I like the idea of two eyes, two ears, because it kind of gives that mindset of having a tight, condensed pocket on the quarterback. If we have a five man pressure, we'll talk about that fifth lane, which is the midpoint, which is right down the QB's uh, midline. Okay. Um, then from there, we have our landmarks. Where I'm talking about beating the man to the spot. Those landmarks are the general mark that I'm trying to beat the man to, but I've got to start working my hands and I got to start really working towards turning myself, turning my toe, my hips, to the quarterback. Okay. Um, now for the ends, the two edge guys, that general landmark for us, we put it about four yards. Um, and as I kind of talk through some of the hands and how to have a plan, Typically that equates to about four steps from the guys. It's not always exact, but that's kind of the framework we work in. Uh, for the interior guys, the tackle and nose, um, their landmarks about two yards past those guards and centers. Now for the inside guys, it's, it's under, important to know, especially when guys bump in, uh, outside to inside, how much quicker everything happens. And you've got to be ready to work your hands and get off and work your landmarks now, okay? From there, as we're working to beat the man to the landmark, I talk about reading his pass set, okay? Reading the o lineman set. And I also give the guys this, so as they watch someone on their own, they can know what to look for. So as we're working to that landmark, we're reading his set. Is he that lineman setting straight back? Is he over setting? Is he jump setting, okay? Um, how's his punch? Is he late with his punch? Is he tight? Is he wide, okay? How's he set? Is he sitting back? Is he forward leaning? Those are indicators I try and give my guys that can help them kind of have a plan pre-snap based off of who they're going against. And the next thing is big. You can't have, I don't believe you have a million different moves. We'll work multiple ones during our indie because certain guys have different skill sets they have to work. But at the end of the day, we got to find one thing we do well and have a counter off of that and then progress from there, but you can't have a million different things, okay? If you don't do a lot of things, you just do a lot of things, none of them well, condense it down and just try and perfect one based off what your kids are good at, okay? Um, the next thing I talk about is hands, hips, height, and finish. When I talk about hands, um, we do a lot of like long arm for our bigger stout guys. Um, I tell the guys one arm longer than two. 
you get to your target and you're stabbed that long arm into a sternum and chest, you can have vision on the QB and you can work your counters off that, okay? I tell the guys, be active. Don't bring your hands down. You gotta be up ready to go at all times. Keep everything tight to your body. Don't play outside yourself. Keep your elbows tight to your rib cage, okay? So you're always, all you gotta do is create space between you and the alignment. A lot of it just takes clearing your chest. So I use those words a lot, but the big thing is be active. As we get to like the pop-ups, the gauntlet, keeping their hands up and ready to go is huge. You can't be dropping your hands. Um, the next part is hips. Um, get that open, get them open to the quarterback, turn your toe where you want to go. Got to get to your target. And we've got a bunch of stuff for that. A lot of things you can do in pre-practice on those uh, Thursday, Friday type days um, to really get those things going. Uh, the next one is one that I did not do a good job last year of stressing enough with my guy. Just going back and watching the film these last few months. And that is reducing the height of your shoulder. Okay. Grabbing grass, a lot of guys say, okay. Give that O lineman less surface area to punch. Change the height of your sh shoulder. A lot of these tackles, especially, don't want to bend and get real low. So once you uh, get lower and create a lower surface area, it becomes much more difficult for those guys, okay, for those tackles and O linemen. And the last thing, guys, is just finish effort, effort, effort takes pressure over everything else. And when the ball is thrown, you got to turn and go. Okay. Over the last few months, we got tired of watching all like the spring, uh, the, the previous fall camp cutups, that kind of stuff. So we've been watching as a group, a lot of like NFL film guys, guys want to watch. And I'll tell you what, the, the everyone's got different skill sets in terms of guys that are productive in the league and what they do, but it all comes down to effort, nonstop going to QB. A lot of it's not a bunch of pretty stuff. It's just nonstop effort and doing those one or two things they do and doing it uh, outstanding, okay? Now, the first fundamental we talk about is stance and get off, okay? Now, the first drill we do, like a lot of people, we draw as a progression, okay? So the first one I'm gonna talk about is agile get offs, okay? And the, the focus of this drill, okay, is getting the guys to uh, understand jumping out of their stance. We always teach run game first and we wanna get those feet in the ground fast before we make contact in the line. We got our feet in the ground, punching tight, um, is getting them in the mindset of jumping out of their stance and gaining ground towards their target, okay? So the way we drill this, and some of these drills, guys, two things. One is I'll, I'll kind of talk through when it's not looked at, and it's not correctly, like right now, Josh is too far outside the bag. And I do apologize, like some of the film will be from like uh, other places I've been. Um, so I didn't get all my my, my uh, drills filmed last year. Um, so then also just access to some film that's in the office that I couldn't get to right now. Um, then also a couple of things, guys, before we get going into the actual drills, just some things I think are important for the D-line coach that kind of took me coaching it to learn was a lot of times other positions, you might start a drill and like set hit, wherever it might be on a whistle. Um, do everything you can, I firmly believe this, to to go on a key or a sound for your guys, whether it's a ball key, a man key, whatever it might be, best you can to start a drill with a key so they get used to ignoring the sound and reacting to movement, okay? Now, some drills are hard to avoid, but the best you can do in your drills to have them react to a movement and a key and not just going on sound. That's not what we do up front. Um, the next thing is, um, if you go like team reps, guys, just um, a lot of times the drill might start at the minus 35, your guys might get in the habit like mine, do it just lining up on the line, you know what I mean? So the ball could be on the 36, 33, and they're still on the line. If you could talk to your head coach, guys, hey, coach, we start the team period in the minus 33, plus uh, minus 33, minus 37. I think my guys, you guys have to work a little bit. Uh, so back to get off. So we start this drill, guys, okay? The emphasis is those first two steps jumping out of your stance, okay? Now, we start in an outside shade. Josh is the D lineman right here. He should be splitting his bag. He's cheating the drill by having this foot outside of it, okay? And right here, because it will make him have to get over that bag and get his knee to his chest and raise his feet up, okay? Now, Skyler right here is the O-lineman. He's going to take a pass set that Josh will react to the movement of that knee. Once that thing moves, Josh wants to jump out of his stance, put pressure on Skyler, and work to touch his outside wing tip on his arm, okay? So you'll see right here, Skyler takes a pass set. Josh jumps out of his stance. You can see that second step 
he's not forcefully to drive that out of there because of how he's cheating the drill shade on the bag right here. He jumps out of that stance. He's trying to put pressure pressure on uh, on Skyler, and we're going to tag that outside arm, okay? Next one here is Skyler. He's doing the same thing, okay? Now, he's shading in the bag. So if you and Raph is the O lineman, once that knee moves, we're getting off, off the ball, jumping out of our stance. So you can see right here, he's not forced to have to bring that leg and drive that knee over the bag, okay? So he's not putting the max amount of pressure and gaining ground as much as he could. So you want those guys splitting the bag, the forcing to jump out of that stance and drive their knee, drive their knee to their chest. Okay, so now as we work the initial two-step get off, we work to this one. So we got the guys in the mindset of, and I try and tell the guys what we're working with emphasis is and if it's run game or pass game. Okay, so we're trying to get them to get off mindset, okay, and putting pressure on this lineman. So now we got them in the mindset of jumping out of their stance, those first two steps. Now we call this close the distance. We put the D lineman in an outside shade, O lineman one yard back, okay? He's still reacting to this O lineman's knee, okay? And they're in a 10 yard race, okay? This lineman, I don't have him pass set. I tell him to straight back pull out of this thing, okay? Don't let that guy, don't let this D lineman tag you. Okay, so Luke right here, once he sees Demi's knee move, he's jumping out of his stance and he's working to beat Demi to that 10 yard mark. And when he gets there, he wants to tag him with the outside hand. Don't let him use the inside hand, guys, because if he uses the outside hand, it'll force him to start to open his hips up and start to turn his hips as we'll get to emphasize more and more, okay? So right here, you'll see Luke right here, jump out of his stance, and it's a dance, it's, it's a race to that 10 yard mark, and Luke's trying to beat him. Then he tags him with the right hand, and you can slightly see, they might naturally want to reach that inside hand, guys, but you can see you have him tag the outside shoulder, that outside arm. See Luke's already naturally starting to bend and get those hips and turn that toe to the QB. So here's pork chop right here, same thing, late with the film. He's going to beat that man to his mark and tag with that outside arm. Last one right here for Demi. Okay. Luke's in a, in a pass set. He gets going. He back pedals, and Demi's just trying to beat him. Just beat him. Tag him. Good look by Demi tagging him, and we're going to get a little bend right there again in the drill. Same concept right there. Jump out of your stance, put pressure on those linemen. Okay. Now, as we've worked get off and jumping out of their stance, we talked about those two yards and four yard landmarks, okay? So you just saw the guys working, working to 10 yards. Obviously we don't work to that landmark. We talk about just pass rush. We have that two yard and four yard landmark where the guys got to understand. Now I got to understand, I got to work and start bending to the quarterback so I can get to my target and I'm not out of my rush lane. So right here guys, We'll do this drill, and I call it landmark get-offs. So in this picture right here, we have the pop-up, emphasizing the landmark at four yards, okay? Our guys are in an outside shade. So right here, we got the interior guys, okay, working an outside shade, and that cones the two-yard line, okay? So uh, that's it, two-yard line, the bag's at four. It's that two-yard landmark we talk about. So now, we want them to start to get a feel for when they've got to work to bend at the QB and, and match. Now, it also can change based off the O-lineman set, but when they've got to work their hands and when they got to start bending towards the quarterback. So right here, uh, Coach Myers right here, he's, we're trying not to give them a, a sound key and try to give them a ball or a man key. So they're going a ball key in this picture. They still want to jump out of their stance like they would in the previous get-off drills. But now they're working to that two-yard mark. And all I tell them, once they get to that mark, I want to see you reduce the shoulder and bend downhill. Just keep emphasizing getting their hips turned and getting that toe turned, okay, with that rush. So right here, they get the, the key, and they're both working club rip to help them reduce that shoulder. And you can see right here, uh, Chuck does a good job working to flip the hips, get those toes turned. He gets that hip turn, guys, and flips that hip uses that outside leg to kind of throw himself through there 
and really, I want to see those guys work to really reduce that shoulder and bend downhill. Nico's a little bit too high in his picture, and he raises up out of his stance too much. And that one jumped a little bit to the right here, guys. So you see, my bad, Josh, number 99. He raises up out of this thing way too quickly. You know what I mean? He's thinking too much about the landmark, not about just getting off the ball. So he raises up way too fast, but he does do a good job of understanding. Now I want to bend. I want to turn that toe and get my hips back downhill. Now, as we do this, guys, you know, so this is at four yards. The cone's at, two, at the two-yard marker. For the DNs, we back this up two yards and work – that deeper landmark for the guys, okay? But this is just a picture of the actual drill itself, but we deepen it up for those edge guys. Just get a feel for where that landmark is, okay? Now, in terms of just straight get off, okay? So now we're in a three down look, it's third down, okay? Watch these two edge guys. So the focus I want you guys to see right now is a straight get off. And I'll show you just a sideline view of what we're looking for, okay? So now, just on paper, balls at the 39-yard line. That landmark, you're trying to beat the guy at the 35-yard line for width and max, okay? So now, ball snapped, okay? Now, at that landmark, just how much pressure Max is putting on that tackle to pose a K on. Because of the, of the rush Max has taken, he's got that tackle turned. He's crossing over. He's got no power. Now, what you can also see is Max even was doing a great job with his get off to that landmark, putting pressure on that tackle. Because a lot of times the speed rushes set up other stuff for later. You also see because of that landmark, he never bends and turns that toe to the QB. He just flies by the quarter, which cannot happen. You don't want to give these pictures, okay? But you do see his get off. He's got about two yards on width, the boundary end, but you don't see him start to bend to his target at that landmark. Uh, same thing right here, guys. So now third downs, end the game. Okay, so we're just letting the guys straight rush. Third down, it's two minutes. Let the guys eat right here. So now we have the two ends, the guy at the top, the guy in the boundary, just watching their get off right here. And same thing, Max doing a real good job putting pressure on this tackle. He's got the tackle shoulders turned. He's got a wide base. Max is in a good position. And Witt's also doing a better job of gaining ground, putting pressure on that tackle. Okay, now Max recognizes where he is with the rush, so he starts to bull rush that landmark back towards the QB, okay? Works the edge, reaches the outside arm, he affects his throw. But it all starts with that initial get off and understanding when you gotta start to bend the QB, okay? Um, now, next fundamentals have, we talk about is having a plan in mind, okay? And we talk about lanes, not gaps, that's big. Now, we also talk about protections here and different looks you're gonna get and also knowing you're going against, okay? So now, the first thing I wanna show you guys is just, when I'm talking about pass rush lanes, what I mean, a lot of you guys know I'm gonna have different ways to communicate it and it's all lanes matter of getting the guys to do it. So now, both these ends are working the outside cage, which is the outside ears of the quarterback. These two inside guys are working the inside eyes on the cue, working the inside cage. So I just, so we're all talking the same language. That's what I'm referring to right there. Now, you'll see right here, we're bringing a pressure. And Tackle's calling it out. And you'll see, and now when we add this fifth guy in the pressure, outside cage, outside cage. Inside cage, inside cage, midpoint. Okay, now, if we had a run on here, I'd be talking about your fit on your man, playing through your target, your gap, et cetera. Once pass develops, it's lanes, not gaps. So this quarterback move steps up, we got to work the balance up these lanes. So if this QB steps up, Chuck is working the midpoint, he's got to fall back inside, as does the three, the, uh, the inside cage, you got to fall back to work the inside eye. So you got to rush with some awareness on the QB. And talk, it's keep going with having a plan, okay? Now, I won't dive too much into protections and what we're trying to get, but for example, this is third and 17, okay? Our guys should know we get this gun far picture with the yo 
what we're getting, okay? It's probably gonna be some kind of seven man protection and you're gonna get chipped by these guys. So pre-snap, they should know this look, I'm probably gonna get chipped, okay? Now, how we play the chippers is this, okay? And this is big for a lot of young D linemen or linebackers you have converting down just for third down, is if we feel we're gonna get chipped, I feel you gotta play it one of two ways. You gotta play heavy on the tackle with a bull rush or chip the chipper, okay? To avoid yourself some break and some ribs. So now right here, you'll see uh, wit to our left as we look at it. He's rushing, that back's working to chip and get out, okay? So wit's working edges and he really exposed himself in that back and get a good piece of him right there. Same thing with the end on the right. But what Kayon can do, he recognizes he's gonna get chipped. He can really work heavy on this tackle and work the bull rush. Or I tell him, guys, he can go chip the chipper. What that means, he gets to this point, go for a collision on the back. Go give him a piece. So the next time he tries to chip, we'll think twice about chipping and getting out. We'll just want to run out and release on all this stuff. But bull rush or go chip the chipper. Make that back for that tight end think twice about what they're doing. Don't give them free shots and on the ribs full time. That goes into just understanding like protections, back sets. We talk about in run game as well. Okay. The next part, having a plan. I apologize, guys. I got no film of this. One of the things I did not get filmed this year, but I think it's big. I talked about set, uh, recognizing the O-lineman set, okay? And we'll drill this in uh, what we call set rec. And I'll go to the actual film to talk about how we drill this, okay? So now, give me a second to kind of talk through this, guys. We typically drill this, you know, good on uh, with our guys, we have the alignment straddle the white line so our guys can get a feel for if they're setting straight back or oversetting based off where that lineman is aligning that line. Now, we have them in an outside shade, okay? And we'll have the O lineman or, you know, we're servicing each other, control the drill. So he'll pass it, he'll pass set straight back or he'll overset. And our guys key in the knee for his get off, but also key in the knee if he's going straight back or he's working for too much width. If he's going straight back, keep working to your landmark, work the outside edge, and we're just tagging the outside arm. If he oversets, okay, remember, we're thinking lanes, not gaps. We can now come inside and you want to get vertical back to the outside cage on the QB now, okay? Now, if you happen to get washed, other guys got to cover, and I'll go over this more in a second. So you'll see right here, this lineman, he oversets, okay, and he sets real early. So Max has got to change his landmark from four yards or four steps to, to two steps. So right here, he oversets, he sees the daylight, and Max takes it, okay? And I'll go to the end zone so we can see it more clear. That tackle is really chasing Max out right here. So he gets the overset, he comes inside, he clubs inside right here. Now, Ideally, you want him to get vertical, but he keeps working the QB. And now he ends up getting washed a bit to the inside cage, which I'm good with. I don't want guys to be robots in their pass rush, or I don't want to slow him down too much. You wouldn't want them to go. But the three technique, Kayon does a good job of making Max right. You talk about two eyes, two ears. Max takes the inside lane. Okay, now he's working now the inside eye of that QB. Wick can now take the outside rush lane so we keep this thing balanced up inside. And that's a good picture of Max recognizing the, recognizing the set, but also by k -On of recognizing to balance up those lanes, okay? Now, as we keep moving along, guys, we talk about recognizing the set. We talk about if that lineman has got a wide punch or a low punch. One thing we teach, one thing we teach here in emphasis is the long arm. Okay, and guys got different names for it, that kind of stuff. Um, the way we teach the long is, is a progression. And I apologize once again. Um, the first two parts of the drill I don't have on film. I'm going to talk to it briefly, but I think it's real important. You don't just jump right into the full speed drill. Okay, so now we begin to drill. Okay, in a two point stance next to the pop up. So ignore this, guys. I apologize. He's in a two point, okay, with his inside foot up, outside foot back, and he's bending 
bending his ankles, knees, and sinking his hips. He's got his inside arm bent and right at about shoulder level, okay? And we're in that position next to the pop-up, okay? And the focus of this thing is focused on the initial stab with the inside arm and hitting our target, which is the man's sternum. You'll see a lot of guys miss their target and it ain't worth nothing for the long arm. So we start guys in a two in a two point, that inside hand ready to strike. I'll give them a command, I'll say set hit. And now they're gonna step with the inside foot and punch to their target right down where that guy's sternum would be. Okay. And I want their body position. I want them to hold that body position best they can. They see they've hit their target and that they they're low and their eyes through hands. So as they run through the thing and they explode their feet, they're able to torque and explode through the man. So we have them at two point. Okay, I say set hit and they just punch, strike and hold the thing. I keep the focus of the drill short. They know exactly what they gotta work. They're working on their on just the, the stat or the target, okay? Now, beyond that, the next one we'll do is we'll have in the same position with their inside foot up, we already have them stabbed. Okay, if they're already stabbed, put that, and they got their hand to their target. Okay, now we're working the hip flip to counter off it. We're all say set hit, and they'll take their outside arm, club, flip the hips the perpendicular, okay, on the bag, okay? So we work the stab, work the hip flip, okay? It's kind of the progression. Then we work to the, doing a full, the full deal, okay? So we begin this drill, guys, with a four yard landmark for the edge guys or a two yard landmark for the inside guys. Okay. And about a yard inside width wise is the pop-up at first I used one pop-up, but it provides no resistance. They stab the thing and punch it. And it's not even there. I want the guys to feel some kind of resistance. They got to actually punch and drive through the thing. So I put two pop-ups up. It's more work for me, but guys, it's worth it. Okay. So now same thing. We try and give, always give the guys a movement key best we can. So he just takes a pass set and gets out of the way. I want you to watch Kayon. It's a good rep right here by Wit. So now he gets the pass set and we typically give the guys four yards equates to about four steps if you're jumping out of that stance how you should. So now Kayon, one, two, three, four, bam. He works to stab to his target a little bit high. And the thing you like is he sunk his hips and he's got knee bend. So now as he explodes through his man, he can get great push and torque on that lineman. Now he drives through his target, okay? And on that one, two, three, four, you're gonna see him drive off this outside foot and transfer his weight outside to inside through his target. This is a good picture by Kayon right here. And he's driving through his man, good lean, good bend, and he's playing low through his man driving through it, okay? Now, this is one by Mel. And Mel, this is something that he should really perfect for the fall. We've talked about it quite a bit because of his skill set, his size, and strength. And uh, so Mel's footwork, you'll see right here, is good, but he's just way too high. So now he gets, he, and this is where Kyrie gives him a ball key, which is fine. Uh, and he goes one, two, three, four. He transfers his weight. The first thing you see is how much higher Mel is with his pads, okay? He's got very, he's, his hips are so high, okay? He's got little knee bend, so he gets no torque or punch. The only power he gets is from his, is from just his arm, which ain't enough, okay? So, and he's also, I talk about eyes through hands, his eyes are above his hands, so he gets very little power. It's not the same picture we just had from Kayon. The initial steps is good, he's just too high, he's gotta drop his weight and his hips, okay? And that'll get him better on his stab and his punch. And also be under control and stay up. Now, for the inside guys, we just tighten this thing down, same drill, we just put it two yards. And you're gonna see Chuck right here. He takes the one, two, bam, and he's driving out of it, okay? You can see right here too. He's got eyes through hands. He gets to his target, okay? His hand is above his eyes so he can drive low to high through the man and he's transferring his weight from the outside foot to the inside foot to through his target. It's a good picture right there. Now here's Josh doing the same drill. And you'll see right here, guys. It should be one, two, bam, punch to your target and accelerate your feet through the man. 
Now, as we keep going with this, we got the shoots. Try and get up in the receivers or running backs, guys. And it's just emphasizes staying low. Exact same drill. Just add the shoots, um, whatever you got for the guys. And what I'm looking for is this. It just emphasizes staying low. And what I don't want to see is the guys just waste at the shoot and duck their head. They don't see their target. So if everything else about is the same drill, we're just emphasizing pad level here. So now, Nico, it's one, two, transfers his weight. Likes it a little more bends, not a bad picture. And he does a good job of getting to his target. That's a real good body position we want the guys to be in and accelerate himself through the man. And now you're going to see um, Skyler right here doing the same drill, but you're going to see him one, two, and he's just ducking his head so he misses his target. He wants to be low to high and drive up through the man. And here's us with the with the uh, sky view of it, with the ends. Now, Max is trying to figure his footwork out with this, which is fine. It takes some time to get a feel for it right here, but it's the same thing. So now it's one, two, three, four. He takes a little bit too much. And you can see, instead of dropping his hips, he just bends his waist and ducks his head. So it forces him to miss his target, okay? So now you guys see Wit right here. We're still working long arm, okay? So now, and Wit's usually really good at this stuff and all the drills. So now you'll see him one, two, three, four. A little better job you see of him dropping his hips, not just waistband like you saw Max do, okay? So he's one, two, three, four. He drops his hips, so he's ducking his head, and he gets more torque so he can accelerate through his man low to high, and also he gets to his target. And you'll see a couple clips right here, guys. Watch number 20 on the left. And there's a picture of him. He's working to beat his man. man. And guys, if the guys start changing which foot's up or back, it changes up uh, if it's a four-step, two-step, whatever. I don't get too let – and I let them kind of feel that out, which step they want to drive off of, okay? So, so now on the left, you'll see Max, okay? And he's going to read this set – by this tackle, almost jumps. And he sees this tackle with that wide punch. So I already know Max is initially thinking bull rush on long arm this thing. The thing Max does though, is he misses with his target. He should put that right arm right on his sternum, okay? And then he'll put himself in this position or that tackle goes ahead and wins inside. You know what I mean? If he gets his hand inside now, that right arm to his sternum, he's in much better position right there. Now, as we talk about the two or the three tech to our left, we're talking about, you know, like having a plan and set rec recognition. He sees that tackle, you see that guard overset, okay? And we just exactly how the drill would look if we were servicing each other in practice on set rec. So that guard oversets right here. And now he's one, two, bam. And now Nico comes inside and he's just club ripping or club punching like he's in the pop ups. Good job by Nico recognizing, recognizing the set of that guard and getting to his target on the QB, okay? Now right here for same thing, watch number 20 to our right, okay? So now Max is working long arm again, okay? He sees a real low punch. Now, what you don't see by Max, he's just too straight up and he's too high. Okay, he wants to get more bend so he can be played low to high, eyes through hands, so he can drive through his man. That initial stab creates no power. Now, Max does a great job restarting his feet to knock him back and then working to flip his hips at the top of the rush to get his hips open. And it's a good finish, but initially, he wants a better job of being lower on his stab when we start off. Now, kind of jumping ahead to watch Kaon with the spin move. And this is not what we want to do right here, how it's going to look. I'll talk about, the, you know, how we teach a spin move here in a second is K-On right here. And I'll talk about more in depth. You'll know what I mean. A lot of guys, when they spin, they spin back to the same place they just were. It makes, it's not going to do them any good. They just spin back into the man, it's dead. Okay, now, when they spin, he wants to drop his weight and plant that right foot to work his spin move. I'll get into details later. 
But because he's trying to spin and he's still running forward, never drops his weight or puts that right foot in the ground, he's running forward as he's spinning and it puts them in the same spot he started and it's easy work for that tackle. And I'll coach that more later, but I just want to kind of touch on that of how it should look uh, with the spin. Okay, now, if you guys watch number 18 here, okay? So he's playing that five technique right here and he's going to work an inside, inside, we've got an outside uh, rusher. He'll work inside on the guard right here. Now, and same thing. He works his technique work, work in the guard, and that guard's got a real wide punch. So Nico knows he can win. He punches, he starts to bull him. But the biggest thing you see is how he restarts his feet, and then that's the position he's a little bit high, but he's driving through his man, through his target, and walking him back. And he's got him control right there. He's got one arm, walking him back, left arm's open so he can flip across and work to reach for that QB, get himself a sack and a safety. Now right here, watch number nine, right here to the defensive left, right here. You're gonna see Kayon working the long arm right here. So he gets off, one, two, three, four. Now he works to his target, real wide punch. He works to his target, he's got great bend. So now he's got leverage on that tackle to drive through the man right here okay and drive him back and then fall back inside when that cue steps up so good pad level by k on right there now next thing we'll kind of touch on is the hezi okay um this is big for like speed rush guys they're working speed 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 tackle oversets they come inside now they got that tackle right where they want them okay we talk about the hezi what i want to see the guys do i want to see them when they're working that that tackle or that guard to step with the inside foot like a hard sell. I want them to also flash their head and inside hand, okay? And we'll also work this off the long arm like a ghost. We'll fake the long arm and pull it back. It works the same thing, but for the hezzy, sell the inside rush by stepping with the inside foot, flash the inside hand, sell the head movement, okay? What we're trying to get done is get that lineman to brace himself, okay? and it forces them to sit and it creates a softer edge outside, okay? To watch to work our edge movement, okay? Now for the drill itself, you can't see all of it. The cones are all two yards, should be two yards apart, should be four cones with two pop-ups pop behind it. The first pop-ups after the fourth cone is for us to work like a club rip because when you work the hezzy, you gotta be ready to work, work your hands right away. And the final pop-up is going to be us working tomahawk on uh, on the QB. So you see Kayon right here. At every cone, he's going to flash. He's going to jab the inside foot, sell it with his upper body as well. Jab, jab, jab. Now I want to see you club rip, work your hands, and work to your target. So you'll see John right here, guys. John's got a good picture. He's number uh, right here, defensive right. And he's a big, great get off speed rush guy. He's working all this. They overset. He comes inside. Now he's gotten where he wants him. You're going to see John get off the ball, tackle sets. He has he's inside, then club rips and gets a real soft edge of the QB. And we got a good picture right here. Huh, bam. But the best part is he doesn't just sell it, he uses his hands. So it makes it a better edge for himself. Good job by John. If he didn't work that club, that tackle would restrict his movement and get his hands on him, okay? Um, that's kind of, uh, you know, the breakdown of how we teach stance and get off and having a plan. Now we get into hands. And this is stuff you got to always drill, pre-practice. You got a few minutes on special teams, whatever it might be. Get as much stuff in it as, as you can. Um, and I talk about keeping things tight to your body, okay? Elbows tight to your rib cage, okay? To so where our goal is to just get his hands off, create space to me in that alignment. Don't play outside yourself. As he shoots his punch, you're not trying to knock down his bicep or his shoulder. If you just knock down his wrist, which is probably the weakest part of his, of his arm, you're creating as much space as you need. But you gotta keep your hands up the entire time. I just wanna show you, Mel right here, how tight he works his hands and how they're always up and ready to go. 
So now Mel gets off the ball and he clears down the guy's punch, but he keeps it tight. All he's doing is clearing that guy's wrist. Then as soon as he works to clear the wrist, he's coming with the club to get the hips open with that right arm so he can bend through the cue and not let that lineman recover. And we'll see the end zone right here also, guys. So you'll see Mel. He's not, he keeps everything tight to his body. He knocks that left arm down. Bam, he's gold. Now his right arm works the club to get his hips open to his QB and not let that guy recover. That's a good picture of keeping everything tight to your body and he hitting the weakest part of that lineman, okay? So now in terms of the actual technique we talk about in our room, the first one we talk about is Jet Lee, okay? And we got a double swipe I'll get to in a second. So when we teach Jet Lee, okay, we'll teach it in one-on-one -on -one pods, okay? What we teach the guys is we have the guys in outside shades, okay? They'll use the inside hand and just clear all the way across their chest. And that, I don't know if you guys can't see me, but that elbow should stay tight to your body and just clear your chest. If you play too far outside your body, they punch and we're hitting the strongest part of their arm. It ain't gonna get them off us. Clear your chest, your thumb should, should all nearly just wipe across your chest, get their hands off you, okay? Now, your outside arm should just work to pin their elbow or their forearm, okay? So it's clear, pin. And as you pin, you'll be getting your hips open to work the edge, okay? And then you'll rip and bring that inside leg through, okay? Now, as we drill this, we pot it up and we're not working the hip part of it in this part right here. We get to that in like our rush circles, but right here we're just focused on the actual hand movement, not the hips. So now the first guy will post it up. So you'll see it right here. He has his arm posted. Okay. He'll take that left arm, the defender and clear it across his chest. Get that arm off. At the same time, that outside arm will pin the elbow. Okay. And then he'll post his other arms. The next guy gets the exact same rep. Now, initially had the guys go slow to get the hand movement down. And it speeds up, which the kids need to get a feel for is working their hands and timing up with their punch. So if you get good, you can do this drill. And as he works to post this arm, the defender can work to clear his chest right before that punch gets there and work the same drill. Okay, guys? So they're learning how to time up that O-lineman's punch. And we'll see it here. So I just tell the guys for the drill's sake, it's clear pin post. Clear pin post, clear pin post, clear pin post, clear pin post, clear pin post. Clear pin post. And then as we progress to it, the next part of the drill would be to clear, clear, and, uh, uh, clear your chest, pin the elbow, and then as you pin the elbow, get your hips open, rip, and work an edge around the guy and get back to square again, okay? That's us working gently. Keep everything tight to your body, time up their punch. Now, next one's double swipe. It's very similar to gently and how it begins. You start the guys in the outside shade. Now we're taking both arms and once again, keep them tight to your body, elbows tight to your rib cage and you're gonna swipe all the way across your chest with both arms, okay, and as you're doing that, you're gonna get your hips open and bring your hips through so you're perpendicular to the D lineman. So as you swipe here, you should be facing his shoulder right there as you work through it, okay? So now, we come across our body, keep everything tight, and as we're doing that, we're bringing our hips through, and now I want them to see themselves with his body splitting my body, so they can see I brought my hips through, which is very important, okay? And then they come back to square. Now, same thing. We started like this, then we progress, we have them flip their hips, and then rip, grab grass, work an edge, and work all the way around, call those rush circles, okay? But we started off teaching just like this, okay? And that's kind of how we teach the basics of it, okay? So now, we get into, uh, kind of doing it, you know, progressing off of that, we're getting the guys getting off the ball and doing it. So now we're getting them on the hoops. So they got to now, they got to get off the ball. 
work their hands and then reduce the height of their shoulder and hug the hoop and get a finish, okay? So we're adding more to the drill as we keep going, okay? So now I'm gonna start my hands low. I'm gonna punch. So they gotta time up when they're gonna punch, okay? So now you'll see Kayon right here. I shoot him, he keeps them tight to his body and he wants to swipe all the way across his chest, okay? That right arm should really come all the way to the opposite uh, cuff and swipe all the way across himself and clear his chest. And as he's doing that, he wants to get his hips open, snap the outside hip through and get his shoulders bent. And then he wants to just hug the hoop, reduce the height of that shoulder, which I'll keep talking about, and that's talk about in height. And then on all, everything at the top of the rush on the hoop, you'll see the guys reach the outside arm. And that does two things in my mind. It gets the hips open, but it also gives them a chance to reach for a tackle strip. And that's what Kayon's doing right here by reaching the outside arm now. He wants to finish, he starts outside the cone. I want him to hug the hoop and stay tight and finish inside the cone. So right here, here's Max. He gets the pass set, I shoot in the hands. He's playing a little too far outside of his body right here. He's trying to get his hips open, reduce the height of your shoulder, hug the hoop. He's already drifting too far from the hoop. Stay tight, reach the outside arm. We get a tackle strip, bring those hips through a real good picture of bend and turn the toe, finish inside the hoop. Now right here, you're gonna watch number nine on the left right here, guys. And I think he misses with the swipe. So now, he times it up and he's late. He's a, uh, excuse me, he's early with it. Okay. Which is going to happen. Okay. But he's trying to time it up. He's early with it. So the guy gets his hands on him. And now right away, a great way to convert is right to bull rush. So he just gets stuck with it, gets his hands inside, converts to a bull rush worth the press the pocket. Okay. Now you'll see a better one right here by width. So now watch the end to the defensive, right? He's going to work double swipe and do a good job of double timing it up and then reach with the outside arm for a tackle strip. So right here, you've got Kayon working the edge. He times it up. You see him working the swipe from the sideline view. It gets the guy's hands off him. I wish he had his hips more open to the quarterback. Then right here, you always like to see a better job reducing that shoulder and getting it low. But now he's reaching that outside arm at the drill. So even though he's a little bit behind the QB for the sack, he has the Tomahawk strip, which is a huge play. Nothing bigger than that for a D lineman to sack strip. So we'll go to the end zone, guys. Watch the end of uh, defensive right right here. Go to get off. He times up it well. Now you'd almost like to see this left arm come more across his chest, but he does a good job with the outside arm bringing it down. Now he's got to win. Now it's all about hips and height. Hips and height, get your hips open to the QB, height of your shoulder, bend, run the hoop, reach the outside arm, bring those hips through, get a tackle strip. Now, this is big for the speed rush guys. Talk about chop rip, okay? You're beating your man to his mark, okay? We'll teach chop rip and right here, I got the linebackers, okay? Because we work, everyone on our team pressures, cornerbacks, safeties, linebackers, everybody. So we do blitz circuits. So this is one of the best things to teach smaller guys. Now this guy's not small, this guy's about 260, he can do whatever he wants to do. But typically we do these uh, 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 blitz circuits. Um, we're working pass rush with the guys. I get those corners, safety, linebacks. I'm working more just chop rip with those guys and speed rushes, okay? So now this drill should begin outside the cone and he's gonna run the edge with the chop rip, finish inside the cone. Now for the chop rip, I want to, what I want to see, I want to see him chop down with the outside, in, with, the, with his inside arm and rip back up with that same arm. Too many guys might chop and they just let it die. They're going to get grabbed on if they have a chance. You want to chop and rip back up, okay? Bring that thing violently back up in the air, okay? And typically I like to show the hands late so they have to react to it, but I also want to make sure they have to kind of the, the uh, drill right. So now Deshaun is working chop, rip. You see how violently he brings that thing up, guys? Now I put the towels here. So now he's got to come back down and really reduce the height of his shoulder and it forces him to hug the hoop. 
and, and reduce the height of his shoulder, okay? So now he chops, rips, reduce the height of your shoulder, and this helps to emphasize the bend around the hoop, okay? And then hug the hoop, finish inside the cone, okay? And that's what we're trying to get done right there. Now, same thing for Owen. Owen's working the same drill, he's chop, rip, but I want to see him rip back up. If the towel's not in a great spot, I want to, this towel should be farther back here. So it's not right in unison with the chop rip. It's really just to get the shoulder low. Okay, but he's gonna chop rip and then use that other bag, emphasize reducing the shoulder. Okay. Um, you'll see this one right here from Max. Right here. So now right here up top to the field, right at the end, he's gonna work chop rip. Okay, so now he gets off the ball, he works chop, doesn't necessarily get a great rip right here, but he does bend back to the QB, but he's got his BMB. So he works chop, likes him to bring that left arm back up on the rip and then just bend to the quarterback. So here's a, a similar look, but now watch the right D end working on the tight end right here. And guys, when you're on tight end, you got to win. Okay. And it's a good picture by Max of working the, the chop and then bending back to the QB. So he gets off the ball, times up the punch decently by the tight end. That tight end's got a real low punch and he's trying to chop. And now right here, I want to see him really rip that left arm back up because the guy that's got a good punch and a good set can still grab you can still grab onto you rip that thing back up and i really want to see him reach the outside arm turn that toe reduce that shoulder and start to bend 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 and good job fighting right back downhill okay and then right here guys starting to just put this stuff together like our pass rush days guys our emphasis is working multiple stuff with the guys. So now working working the traditional figure eight. They get off on a key and they're running the hoop. And I'll start them off, guys. Uh, I think I work double swipe first. So I flash the hands. They got time to punch. Okay, and they hug in the hoop. On the turn, I'm gonna get them with a chop rip and get them finished inside the cone. So now just as you progress, putting more things together. So they go off on a key, get off the ball. They double swipe, get their hips open, hug the hoop. Stay tight, turn the toe, bend, 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 reduce the shoulder on the turn, get him with a chop, rip, and bend. That's a great job, guys, by wit. Chop, rip, emphasizing that rip back up and finishing inside the cone. That's a real good picture, okay? Um, now, sweet feet, you know what I mean? So right here, this is just something we do. We have our pass rush days where I get all the linebackers, D tackles, D ends. We break up into groups. Coach Myers comes down and helps us out too, and we break the guys up. So now... We're working, it's, it's a lot to the drill, okay? To add something to it. We'll start the drill with the guys on the line. On their key, they get off the ball, shuffle over two, back over two. And this is just to get their feet going, guys. They can have just generic good footwork for the guys. Over two, back two, okay? Off the ball, over two, back two, one foot outside the bag, then you're coming back. And then you're working vertical to your landmark. And from there, we can work spin, swipe, chop, rip, whatever we got to do, and then they get back for a tomahawk on the QB. Now, for this drill, we're working on the chop spin, okay? So now, when we spin, okay, you saw Keon earlier, where he never planted his foot in the ground, and he kept running forward, and he ended up at the same spot. When we chop spin, you want to drop that inside foot, and plant the thing as you chop down that on that uh, lineman's arm. And then you're gonna pivot off of that and rip that outside elbow through to ice pick the tackle or the lineman so we can't recover, but also to ricochet yourself back towards your landmark, which is quarterback. So Owen's got a good rep right here. Get off the ball, over two, back two. Now he's vertical, okay? Now he drops that right foot in the ground. Okay, plants that right foot. Okay, he's selling the speed rush. Chops down with the inside arm. Rips that left arm through to ice pick the thing. And also helps him recover and slingshot himself to his target on the quarterback. It's a real good picture by Owen. But the thing you'll see here, you won't see in the next one, is 
under control, how he drops his weight, and he doesn't really spin until he's starting to get that right foot in the ground. So now right here, you'll get Max. He started off, Hutch gave him, gave him the key, off the ball, over two, back two, then he's working to it. So now Max works his uh, chop spin out of control, and I'll show you why here in a second. Now, as he works, he starts to spin off the outside foot. He never plants that right foot in the ground, guys, so he can't pivot off. He's trying to pivot off his outside foot. You with me? She's already all out of whack, and he misses with the chop and don't get an ice pick. He's out of control, okay? But the big point of emphasis, if your guy just keep running up field and never plant that foot in the ground, they're going to just keep – they're going to spin the same spot they just were, and the tackle's going to crush them, okay? So now watch here. Watch the right end uh, to the field in this picture, okay? He's getting off the ball, and I think he sees the back come to chip him, and he doesn't necessarily chop down on the tackle, probably because of his leverage on the guy, but he's a good job of putting that left foot and dropping that left inside foot in the ground to pivot off of, and then outstanding job of ripping his right elbow through and snapping his head around. So now that tackle cannot recover. That's a great picture right there, okay? And now it also slingshots into the QB. Go to the end zone. Real good picture, dropping his weight, ice picking the tackle, slingshot him back to the queue. Okay, now, got to have counters. I said the word, word rip, I don't know how many times. It might get all the time. So you're going to get caught in a rip sometimes, guys. And I'll show you the scenario that our guys get caught in a lot, especially inside, guys, but really everybody. Okay, so now, if you watch number five, a lot of the stuff we do will be like snatch rip, chop rip, whatever. So you're going to get stuck in this position a lot as a lineman. You with me, guys? Where you're trying to you try to bowl him and snatch him and rip, you're gonna get stuck here a lot. And sometimes his leverage might be low on you, which like how it is right here, or high on you, where he is more towards your upfield shoulder, away from the rip arm. Okay, but you're gonna get stuck here a lot. You gotta have a counter off of it. Okay, so now I'll come back to that. We teach three counters for the guys. The first one is a rip and lift, okay? But first, let me teach the drill itself, because this drill, when it gets messed up, I go crazy, because if they don't fit it up right, and start, the drill looks terrible. I'll tell you, I'll show you a bad rip in a second, okay? The drill begins. This is the o line and this is the D-lineman. I want to see that o line and get its outside foot back, which will be an outside shade of the D-lineman. Outside foot back, drop your weight, outs right outside arm in this picture, grab the shoulder and cloth of that D lineman, and grab it, okay? And be thick. Don't just be a fish with it, okay? The D lineman, you will take your outside arm and grab cloth. Grab the shoulder, the actual pad, and the jersey of that offensive lineman. Your inside foot will be back, and you're going to be, here's a good picture right here, like you're ready to rip. So you're ready to step to bring that same foot, same arm through, and rip through the thing, and you want to drive your feet. So I do this on a cadence. I'll actually say set hit on this stuff. So I'm going to say set hit, bring that right arm, right leg through. I want you to rip and drive your feet, okay? Now, the drill starts the same regardless of the counter we're working. So now, we rip and drive your feet. o line has got to have at least some resistance. So he, the lineman feels some kind of pressure. So now... We're stuck in this position. The D line will take his, once he's ex executed the rip, okay, and he's stuck, he'll take his outside arm and work to just lift the O lineman's elbow and bend his hips back to the QB. So now, right here, you see 91, he ripped, okay, then he lifts that left, that elbow and bends the QB. All that rip and lift is the counter okay now the next one is we rip and we're going to punch an arm over and this is one i think is the easiest to teach okay 
or for my guy to, to do maybe too. So now, good job fitting this thing up. So Pork Chop and Luke rip through and drive their feet. Same position we're stuck in, okay? And we're still starting to drill the same way. We're grabbing cloth, each of us, and we're ripping this thing thick and driving our feet. Now, you're still grabbing cloth, that outside shoulder of that O-lineman. When you're ready to counter, at the same time you drop that inside arm for the rip, if you, if you drop that rip on that inside arm, if you drop that thing, all in unison, your outside arm pulls down that O-lineman's shoulder so you have more surface area to work your edge. You create more room for you to work, okay? And then you, uh, as you drop that arm, you pull down the shoulder, and you punch your arm over on the lineman. So the pork chop's got a real good rip. He rips, then as he works to punch it back, he pulls that lineman's shoulder down, punches over, and turns his togas to his target. Good job by Luke and pork chop right there. Now the last one's the hump, and this is big for the inside guys, okay? Everyone talks about like Reggie White, how long has got good ones, guys. You rip, you're stuck. This is a great one if the lineman, if you feel his weight high on you, so he's more like your upfield shoulder, okay? When we hump, so we've already ripped now, and watch Todd right here. He rips, he drives his feet. Now, your counter is you drop that rip arm, you want to get that right foot in the ground. Okay, and you want to work to bend as you drop that arm. Okay, so drop that right foot and work to bend it so you get more power so the power is not all from your arm. Okay, like pork chop, all his power is going to be from his arm while Todd's getting more torque from his, he got his knee, his foot in the ground. And you're aiming, you drop that rip arm, you want to stop your feet, drop your weight, and you're aiming to club right underneath his armpit. Now, this is us doing it, our first time doing it last winter, okay? Watch these two. This is a good picture of, of they're not, they're like, they're, they're not even fitted up. You know what I mean, guys? You gotta get into it, you gotta fit the thing up. You know what I mean, guys? This is a real good picture right here. This is how not to do it, and it ruins a drill because the guys still know resistance, okay? So now, we're working the lift here. So watch Josh and Chuck right here. So they've got the thing fitted up, they're grabbing cloth, Josh executes a rip, drives his feet, and Chuck's giving resistance, okay? And he's stuck. Josh takes that left arm and lifts the elbow. And then the big thing that Josh did a good job of, and they all do it, is the bending and turning back inside of the quarterback. But you see, like, Nico and uh, and, uh, and uh, Wood aren't getting a great look, guys. It's just not a good fit. So Nico and it's a good fit. So... The drill is so important, it's ran, it's ran correctly from the look guy and the defensive guy. It's so now going back to Chuck right here. He's working snatch. And he now, right now, he, he's as low. You want to arm over this thing. He's, he ripped, left arm, pull that thing down, drop the right arm, punch over. And it's going to happen much faster for the inside guys. But if Chuck counters here sooner, we got a chance for a sack or something to QB's face. Or we got a pick. Okay, so they talk about hands, hips, and height, guys. All right, um, and this stuff is, is 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 huge, and this is stuff you can never get enough work of, guys. And this is where a lot of guys have got creative drills for this stuff, and it's really good. But the first one we teach off of is the gauntlet. It's the four pop-ups, and we the first time through have the guys go through with no hands. So like everything else, it's going to be a progression through it. So now, and I'm sorry, guys, I got to use other film. We start for our guys, apologize, with four pop-ups, four yards apart. We have our guys put their hands behind their back, okay, as they go through it first. They square up on the cone. They'll work through the bags, and if their focus is simply just the hips. So what I want to see, I want to see them snap their hips and snap that outside shoulder through so they get the perpendicular. Now our guys' hands be behind their back and snap their hips so they're perpendicular to the bag, okay? So they're snapping their hips, getting that left shoulder through their behind their back and swing that upfield leg to create momentum and get those hips turned, okay? Now, 
we get to this point as we see right here, a coaching point is this, okay? You gotta remind your guys is once they work the club, is they gotta bring that now his left knee through. Okay, as we get to the hands, we'll rip, but still, even with their hands behind their back, I still wanna see them get the hips open, then drive this left knee through, get the hips vertical so they can gain ground through the back. Rear pork chop doesn't get any, any, any flip right here. But remind us, we'll do this with our hands behind our backs so where our guys can simply just focus on the hips, getting that front leg through and getting their hips perpendicular to the pop-up. Now, off of that, we'll work hands with the bags four yards apart. Okay, guys? So we, we progress to it. Do no hands the bags with the four yards apart. Then we progress to what you see now where they're one yard apart. Okay? As you tighten the bags down, it just emphasizes never stop your feet, never stop your hands. The farther they're apart, you know what I mean? The guys can just focus on just my hips and my hands. But now, as you tighten them down, it emphasizes that, that my hips and hands can never stop. Okay, so now we tighten the things down. We start the draw with the hands up. Okay, elbows tight to your body. And we're gonna work club rip through the bag. Our hips work the same we just talked about. But now we're gonna club as we get our hips open and make contact on the bag and on bodies, we aim for that back tricep with our club. And I want to see those bags hit the ground, okay? Now, if guys are using all arm and no hips, the bag doesn't go anywhere. It all works together, okay? Then once they club, I want to see them rip the inside arm, inside leg through. But what you're going to see here, guys, you're going to see Rock, he drops his hands. Your hands must, you can never get dead hands during this stuff. So he's working club rip. And I want to see him violently right now rip that right arm through. Get your hips open, rip through. And then usually we'll have the four bags and a, and a fifth one for a QB for Tomahawk. We're using Coach Myers to short a pop-up. So good job by Mel. He chops and he rips the thing back. See how the urgency of bringing that leg through? Good picture by Mel. Be going by Witt. So see how he snaps his hips, guys? And he's really focusing on ripping down. The only problem here with his rip he brings the rip a little bit late, but the hand and that the leg and arm that work together, guys. It's got to be in unison. That rip, got that right up rip, right leg, got to work together. A rip, bend to your to the QB. Now, we tighten this thing down, guys, and they're touching. And the guys hate this one, but it's a good, it's a great way to emphasize: never dropping your hands, never getting dead feet. I say the farther, the farther the bags are apart, they might drop their hands, not keep their feet active between the bags. But when they're this close, guys, if you don't keep your hands up and keep them going, and you don't keep your feet going, you're going to fall over. Okay, and that's not how it's going to how we're going to get through it. Keep your hands up, keep your feet active. So right here, it's going to be club ripped through the bags. You see a towel right where Kayon is. From the last bag, I want to see them club rip, drop their shoulder, scoop it up, and grab grass. So one thing you'll see is Nico's hands always step and his feet never die. But you got to keep your feet and hands alive all the way through it. Okay, so that's kind of where we start with hips, guys. Now from there, we get into some drills we do with the bags and everything. Um, I call this one working an edge. I set up the bags, okay, the four bags with a tomahawk finish. They start behind the line. I give them a key. They're two feet between each bag. All the while, they want to keep turning their hips inside to their target, okay? So you'll see Whit right here gets off the ball. And you see as he keeps turning his hips inside to his target, finishing the pop-up. You'll see some guys the first time doing it, they have a hard time getting those hips turned inside. And there's another one, you know, we need to do a bunch of this stuff in the summer with the guys, you know what I mean? In the off seasons, a lot of great stuff to do guys. Now, and they also, this is also stuff that they should be doing on their own right now if they have access to it. So now they're gonna work, get off the ball to their two yard landmark for the inside guys, okay? 
They're going to get out the ball. I want to see them snap their hips and flip their hips like they're on a pop-up. And now they're shuffling over the bags, two steps in each, facing inside. Once you go over the bags, work vertical, club rip, stay tight, turn your toe, finish inside the white line. It's a good rip by Chuck. I give him his ball key, get off the ball. I want to see him snap his hips, get more snap through that thing. Then it's one, two, stay in square. Then it's club rip. Great job by Chuck. That's outstanding. Really flipping his hips through, bringing that leg through, and he's already bending and turning that toe to not go outside the white line. Real good picture by Chuck. He's reaching the outside arm. Another one we do just to keep the guys going, just keep adding something to the drill for this stuff, is we have Chuck giving the uh, ball key. So wickets off the ball over two, back two. Just have him work a cut. It's a good like Thursday pre-practice deal, guys. Over two, back two, play the cut. Get vertical, club rip, shuffle over, tomahawk. Here's Chuck, over two, back two, cut, club rip, finish the tomahawk. This, this is one of my favorite ones, guys, we started doing. You know, so they'll work on my key, get off the ball, shuffle over two, flip the hips and club the bag, over two, shuffle over two, two feet between each bag. And they'll club rip finish inside the cone. And I think it's a good job by a young kid, Kyrie's kind of gonna be a real good player. Get off the ball, shuffle over two, flip the hips, drive that right hip, that right leg through, and okay, club the thing, get them open, shuffle over two, then it's club rip, really start to bend, okay? So you don't drift, good finish by Kyrie. Here's Josh, over two, flip them, over two, club rip. The last one by Witt. Good job, Ben, finishing the drill. You'll see, just going to some of the film, guys. Um, here's a clip from UNH last year. You'll see the 2i. Watch Nico right here to our right. So now, he's working inside cage. He shows the inside of rushing the guard. That guard really sits down on Nico. So now, now it becomes he's working the pop ups. He doesn't work club punch. Now, before I get to the club, I love how the punch arm over, I wish the punch over was tighter, okay? But I do love that left arm, left leg working together, okay, to come down on it. But what you don't see is when he works the club, you don't see him get his hips open, okay, guys? And it forces him just enough where now he's still working vertical, okay? And he ends up running by the QB, okay? And allows that QB to step up. And here's a play by Max. You'll watch the defensive end to the, uh, on, on defensive left right here. So now he is working. He tries to show the head. He works the hezzy right here. He sells the inside rush. That tackle actually sits. So it creates a shorter edge for Max, okay? So Max works the hezzy, then comes back with the club punch. Now, right here, he does a good job with the hezzy, the club. But what you don't see as much is him getting his hips open to the quarterback. So it forced him to drift. And he's a good, decent job recovering, but just with that initial club not opening his hips, gets him in a tough spot where he's really got to fight. And just keep bending, turning that toe back downhill. Keep reaching that outside arm. Out, keep reaching the outside arm so you can at least get like a tackle strip on the QB. Okay, then right here. Just to emphasize, you know, inside guys, it's tough to get sacks, you know, sometimes. But so when you get a shot, you got to be able to get to it. You'll see Chuck right here. We get a play action pass. Chuck beats beats his man, and now he wants to really turn that toe and bend. You see that right foot right there? You want to get that thing bending back downhill, so you can't let the QB step up, man. You can't leave sacks in the field like that. Now, hide your shoulder, guys. Um, this is a good one, guys, and I gotta teach it better. And I've tried to incorporate as much of the drills as we can. Um, but um, a couple of drills that kind of just focus on just reducing the height of your shoulder. And this is one of the kids can do. Like, a lot of times, I'll have to take the edge, at the ends, and work like specific, like cue techniques, things like that, where I can just give them this stuff on their own. I call it tennis ball get offs, where you have a, you know, the, like a, one guy will have a tennis ball, just rolls it out there. Once he sees the ball, it gets off the ball. 
He drops that inside shoulder. Don't bend at the waist. Sink your hips. Reduce shoulder. Scoop it up. Come back downhill. So Chuck rolls it out. Drop the inside shoulder. Bend the inside knee. Work to turn your toe. Scoop it up. Come back downhill. And you can, your guys can do that. You can do that right now. We got a ball to work with. Um, last one we got, guys, is the hoops. And this is a drill if you don't have a million managers you can do to get lots of reps. We're working get offs. They start outside the cone, finish inside. On my movement, get off the ball. I want to see them drop that inside shoulder, okay? Reduce the height, then grab the, the towel and rip back up, okay? And as they work the edge, they'll drop the towel back here, okay? As they drop it down, reduce that left shoulder, rip back up, okay? Pick up this towel, drop it here, finish inside. You'll see as we keep going. The Chuck reduces the shoulder now. He's waist bending, okay? Then execute a rip, emphasize finishing it. Switch hands, rip back up, bend, rip back up, bend, finish inside the cone. And the next guy goes to the next side. A couple good pictures, guys, um, of just how, how big it is to reduce the height of your shoulder. You'll watch Chuck here, I mean, not Chuck, um, Kayon at the right end, and he's working the outside edge. He's working speed, and just he just reduces the height of his shoulder. He's grabbing grass, and now that tackle's on a spot he don't want to be in. So Chuck already, I mean, Witt already won working the edge, but now he, he creates less surface area, and that tackle's in a tough spot. So now he lowers his shoulder like he's scooping the towel, then he rips back up to fight pressure with pressure and get, and get, and get that uh, tackle off him. And then you want to see him reach that right arm to get those hips open, work for a tackle strip. That's a real good picture, reducing the height of his shoulder and ripping back up with it. And here's a good picture of Max, um, the end to the, to the right, to the feel right here, of just dropping low on 71, reducing the height of your shoulder, no surface area. And then he does a good job banning the QB. Obviously, you gotta stay off the Q. Okay, last one, you're gonna see Wit right here. Okay, now he's working the uh he works and this tries to work the bull rush, it looks like. Because he looks like that tackle might punch late, but the tackle gets a good punch inside. So now he gets he gets a little bit stuck. Now he just can his convert to convert into counter, he just drops that shoulder, okay, and creates leverage on that tackle, and it gained just enough separation to get a hit in the QB. He was a little bit sooner, might get a better shot. So, guys, I appreciate that. I hope that helped. Like I said, man, if you guys got ideas or, or things you want to add to it, please hit me up on Twitter, emails, whatever. But I enjoy this stuff, guys, uh, and I really think if you break it down from fundamentals and, and group the drills into it and really help with player development, and um, as you kind of develop the guys and coaching the guys in the offseason. Guys, thank you. Um, hope to hear from all you guys. Take care.